Hi everyone, let's go over my low time frame bullish and bearish scenarios, including potential trading setups, starting with the low time frame Elliott Wave bullish scenario on Bitcoin, where I'm looking for this to be a wave one, two, three, four finished, and then looking for five to the upside, where an interesting target for five is still the 2022 range highs, which also has quite nice confluence with the most common target area for a wave five, which is between the 1.236 and the 1.618, which means it's between 31.5k and 32.3k. However, However, price can always wick above, take the highs and then eventually continue its way to the downside. If we then zoom into this wave 4 structure over here, we were looking for an ABC, which is a simple structure, as wave 2 was more complex in a WXY structure. Wave 4 tends to be a bit more simpler, and therefore a zigzag is called also a simple correction, which is a 5-3-5 corrective structure, with this being wave A impulse, then a 3 wave B, and eventually a wave C to the downside, where the most common target for wave C is this white box over here, which has been very nicely respected. Now moving a little bit to the upside. Also inside this white box, we had the orange Fibonacci, the 0 0.5 over here pulled from the low of 2 to the high of 3, which is the maximum target for a wave 4. Yes, we did on the 1 hour wick below, but we didn't close a 1 hour candle below the 0 0.5. So for me, this is still very valid. And also my real invalidation, as mentioned, was below this range over here, because I mentioned that this range has to hold price. This is very, very important. I put this key level on my chart already a couple of videos ago when price was starting to move down and I said well it's all about this range it has to hold price in order to see more bullish movement to the upside. Now in this particular scenario we basically had two trading set up the more uh, risky one and the more safer one. The more risky one was entering inside this target box over here stop loss below and then trading into the downside so likely of course in profit the more safer option is to wait a little bit for a move to the upside where you want to see five waves you want to see an impulsive structure to the upside and then during the retracement you can potentially because this is educational based on Elliott wave guys ladder the long oh, longs over over here in this area for then eventually continuation to the upside now during a potential reversal to the downside what i would what i would really enjoy seeing is also some bullish divergences on the cvd but of course we don't know if we're going to get it we have to wait and see how price is going to go to the downside because this is important difference between bearish and bullish if price is going to go to the downside impulsively, meaning it is having a five-wave structure to the downside and volume is increasing, this setup over here is not valid. It is invalidated. You want to see a three-wave structure to the downside, which can also be a zigzag, a 535. It can be a flat scenario as well. That doesn't matter. As long as this is a corrective, this one over here, corrective structure to the downside, that is what you want to see for eventually more continuation to the upside. Now, in this particular scenario, price is moving to the upside. And if I open my target boxes over here, we now hit the daily naked point of control. I mentioned in Discord, I was looking for this daily naked point of control to be hit. But as you can see as well, we now closed above it and are at least for now uh, finding some price action above this level. We also have a naked point of control at basically 30K because of this range over here but also a target box up here. So the target box consists of a daily, weekly naked point of control, the current monthly naked point of control, as well as the 786 pulled from the high of B to the low of this wave C. So over here, a little bit of confluence where eventually I'm looking for that move to the downside, right? We're looking for this five wave structure to the upside over here, all good, all fine. This might be the end of wave five, but if price is gonna continue, I eventually expect a move to the downside, a little bit of a retracement and that is then the potential interesting area for this potential educational long setup of course to the upside in the bullish scenario and lastly what i want to say to you in this bullish scenario is that i got a question on discord earlier today from oa and he asked me over here this highlighted message he said hi Kunz, why are you looking for bearish cvd on your bullish scenario and that is actually a very good question so basically what i've been talking about in the past couple of videos is what you see on the chart in text there's no bearish CVDs at the highs and we do have some bullish CVDs as well. So if I then go now to the CVD chart and I'll move to the one hour CVD chart over here. Now what we can see is we have a higher high in price, but also the yellow as well as the blue line, by the way, with this low over here, we have lower highs on the CVD, which is a bullish divergence. And especially in a bullish market structure, a bullish divergence can be very interesting. 
However, I also always mentioned in my previous video that over here there is no bearish divergences. And if there is a big reversal area, like if this would be the big reversal point for Bitcoin and eventually we're going to find way more downside, what I like to see is bearish divergences. And the reason why is actually explained in text over here in Discord where I answered that basically if there is a big reversal area, I like to see a bearish divergences appear. So I see absorption from big players that want the move to the downside. But if you don't see bearish divergences at potential reversal areas, meaning big players are not absorbing long positions yet, it can give me a hint they are looking for higher. Hence, it can support the bullish scenario. So because we did not see any bearish divergences in this part over here, then we could at least as a little bit of additional confluences think that hey the market makers the bigger positions they are still looking for higher because they are not yet absorbing the longs because a bearish divergence basically means that price is making a lower high but there is more buying going on in this high than in this high meaning someone is absorbing all the longs all the longs all the longs the aggressive buyers because they want to move price to the downside well we have not seen that so that therefore can be some additional confluence to potentially look for higher now bearish divergences is not a must it does not have to appear at big reversal areas but it is something to keep into the back of your mind because it is just an additional confluence i suppose in trading bitcoin so if we then go to the bearish scenario the first one we are literally on the edge of this potential bearish scenario because the moment price is going to close the one hour candles in my opinion above the 0 0.5 over here this scenario is invalidated we are literally on the edge as you can see over here now what we were looking for in this particular bearish scenario is a 1212 so we had the short setup over here for the highs where I mentioned, hey, this can be a potential bullish reversal area. So if this short, you know, if one trades based on Elliott Waves and educational, all these setups, of course, one uh, educationally trades this to the downside based on Elliott Waves, then this is definitely a take profit or a close. Now, in this area or in this scenario, we're looking for a one uh, sorry, a 1, 2, then another 1, 2, and then a 3 to the downside for then a 4, 5, and then that finishes the blue 3, 4, 5, right? We're looking basically for downside impulsively. But as I mentioned as well, this wave 1, a leading diagonal is okay, but what I like to see is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and then eventually downside, where the second wave 1 takes the low of the first wave 1. That is ideally what I like to see, which did not happen, which therefore makes me think, hey, is this going to be an impulsive structure to the downside? I'm not so sure. And secondly, the volume is not very supportive for a move to the downside. So even though we are creating a move to the downside, the volume is slowing down. We are making lower highs over here in the volume while price is going down, which if this is a one, two, and then another one, two scenario, and you're looking for a big three to the downside, as this is then a wave three of a wave three, you want volume to increase, which clearly, as far as it stands now, did not happen. Now, then currently we are at the 0 0.5, which is pulled from the high of this yellow 2 to the low of this wave 3. Because if this is a wave 1, 2, 3, and then looking for a 4, then this 0 0.5 is not allowed to be broken for this wave 4, else it is becoming very unlikely. So you definitely want to see this reverse now to the downside. And if we then go to the 15 minute, then you could potentially count this wave to the downside as a 1, 2, 3, 4, eventually wave 5 ending somewhere here, where this then is a 3-wave move to the upside, a 3-wave down, and then a 5-wave move up in an expanding flat. Because if I actually put the fibs on the chart for you, for a wave B expanding flat, then you can take it from the low to the high. We put the expanding flat fibs on the chart. And as you can see, the most common target area for an expanding flat is between the 1.236 and the 1.38, which has been respected, after which we have this move to the upside, which looks to be impulsive as it stands now. The maximum target for a wave C in an expanding flat, so this then being an A, B looking for C, is the 1.618 that you see on the chart. And yeah, this is a 15 minute A, B, C. And as you can see, we now closed a 15 minute candle above the 1.618. So that is not really something you like to see in the bearish scenario but then on the one hour as it stands now if this is then an abc we are still below at least a one hour candle just now close below the 1.618 so yeah i mean this is currently definitely an alternative scenario and not the preferred one but one is you know you, you can't invalidate it completely just yet right
Uh, so yeah, we're looking for more downside in this particular scenario. But then the second scenario for the bearish, um, uh, well, the second bearish scenario is that this is a wave one, then we have a wave two, and eventually this is the other one, and then this is the other two before then a bigger move to the downside. So in this particular scenario, the second wave one is below the first wave one, which is what I like to see. Now, the volume over here matters a little bit less because we are still working on a one, two before the bigger three, and in this bigger three, that's where you want to see the volume increasing. So, I mean, it is okay, you know, right? There's no increasement in volume between this one and this one, too, but that's okay. Um, what is something to note is that this wave one is quite long compared to this wave one, even though this wave one over here is of a higher degree. So higher degrees and lower degrees, this is a one, two in blue, and then we're looking for a three to the downside. And then inside this wave three, we have the yellow count over here. So the yellow count is from a lower degree than the blue count. And usually the blue count should have the bigger moves like wave one, uh, wave one should be longer and uh, maybe also more deep. Then we have wave two that should be longer than this wave two usually, right? So because this is a higher degree count, you expect these moves to be bigger than the yellow count moves over here as the yellow count is part of that first, uh, of that wave three basically. But this one looks quite long compared to this one, as you can see in the chart. Now, of course, can happen, can happen. It is Bitcoin, it is volatile, you know, stuff happens, especially in a wave three. Uh, you can expect these type of stuff as well. But in this scenario, we expect price to reverse mainly between the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.786 FIP, as those are the most common target areas for a wave two, where especially the 786 over here has nice confluence with the daily and the weekly naked point of control at this level over here, where the target box is between 30.2K and 30. 4k basically so that is quite an interesting area for then potentially a reversal to the downside where you really want to see volume pick up and it should be an impulsive move to the downside if that is the case uh, or else this can also eventually be more upside to come because this then tends to be a corrective structure and then eventually you move to the upside so yeah this then is a one two one two to look for for then eventually a bigger three to the downside and lastly what i'd also like to show you is not necessarily elite wave wide uh, wise but this this range that i pulled from this little range over here all the way to where we are right now and as you can see we were uh, basically outside of the value area of this uh, range volume profile the volume profile of this whole range over here where the point of control is over here, value area high, value area low. We found support on the value area low, then broke down a little bit uh, outside of the value area and now are starting to see price going back inside this area. Found a little bit of resistance, now above, might backtest for continuation. If price backtests this and then goes up again, the point of control is kind of the next level, which then is this target box over here, where it can be quite nice to then see that reversal to the downside for the potential bullish scenario. So this kind of plays in the hand of potentially the bullish scenario, as well as the bearish, by the way, the second bearish I've shown, of course, where you then move to the downside and lower prices to go. So both the bullish and bearish scenario still works but um yeah you then expect at least maybe a move to the downside because this structure over here if this is part of the bullish scenario to the upside then you expect at least a retracement eventually it can't just push 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 like vertical to the upside uh, of course retracements can be shallow and then the push continues but eventually you do want to see a little bit of a correction before then a move to the upside and if i go to the 15 minute then you can see yeah it's very shallow maybe a one two three four five or eventually more upside to come whatever it is eventually you want to see a little bit of a, a, a range forming and a structure to the downside like a correction or in a wave to an impulsive move to the downside so that is what i wanted to say i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you i'd like to thank you for watching and subscribing and i will see you at the next one bye bye